All right, so now we're going to see how to return a function from a function. Remember, functions are first-class citizens. <laughs> functions are first-class citizens in Go. Not a big fan of that saying, but we're going to see how to return a function from a function, just like we could return an int or a string from a function. We'll see how to return a function from a function. And I'm just making sure I've got that code there from the previous one. It ends in capital A-M. Good, we've got it. And uh, we'll start this anew. And now we're going to return a function from a function. So we'll do func foo, and, uh, and we'll just run this, and we'll do a return s, and uh, s will be colon equal hello world. And we're just starting out here, and we need to return a string. And we're going to assign that here to s1 colon equal foo. There we go. And now we'll print out s1. Love it. Love it. Hello world. So foo, we're calling the function foo. It takes no arguments. You can see it's defined with no parameters, so it takes no arguments. We call it foo runs, and it takes this string, hello world, assigns it to the variable s, returns that string s, which is returned, and then assigned to s1, and then we print out the value stored in s1, which is hello world. That's nice. I like that. That's like step one. And we'll put that in here as returning code. We'll put that in here as returning a string. And we're doing this because it's easier to sort of see how does uh, returning a func work when you kind of remember how returning a string works. So there's returning a string. Now we're going to do bar. And so we'll create a new function, and that function will be bar. And we're going to have a return here. What's the return going to be? It's going to be a func that returns uh, int. And so now we need to return a func that returns an int. 1984, 42, 2000, and Fahrenheit 451, was it? Fahrenheit 451. That was another book. I don't know that book. Oh, well. We're going to return 451. So here is a function, right? It's a func. It's taking no arguments. has zero parameters in its definition. It returns an int. And here that function returns 451. So just look at that code that's highlighted in blue. That's a function, right? Like that's an anonymous function. If it's up in our code up here... We could self-execute it, put it right there, and uh, we could comment out all this stuff, which would be a hassle. Let's just see if that runs. Cannot use func literal type int as func. Func int return. See, I'm returning, so now I need to catch it. And this is an int. So let's do x. Format run. Cannot use func literal. Func int return 451. Run that. Func literal type int as type func in a return argument. So it's having a problem with this right here. We'll figure that out in a second. Format it and run it. Cool. Nice. So it's returning 451. We're signing it there, and they're printing it out. So that is just to show you func int. And if we were to see the type of that, percent %t. That's going to be, uh, that's gonna be um, 451, because that's actually running. We're just going to assign the function and not call the function, which makes it execute. Now we're just assigning the function to x. And so that's a func this int. And here func bar is returning func int, right? That's what it's returning. And here this is what we return, func int, which is this. And we don't want to execute it, which is why we were getting an error before. All right, so this is what's being returned. And here it is being returned. So we return that. So right here, we could take this and we could just do bar. And now bar is going to run. What happens when bar runs? Bar is going to return this, right? 
funk int return 451 and uh, and that's what gets returned so that's the return type that's the type and we assign that to x and now we're printing out x and so funk int is what was re returned that's kind of cool we returned funk int if we wanted to we could run funk int And func int return 451, so we need to assign that to a variable. And then format.println i. And we'll put a new line there. All right, so let's look through the logic of what's happening here. First, I'll just get this intermediate step and put it into our code base over here, returning a func step one. Step two, cleaned up. So we're going to clean this up. So here, what we're going to clean up is foo, this function foo, right? It returns a string. And so here's the string. We sign to s, and then we return s. If you wanted to, you'll see this often. Just return the string. Instead of assigning it to a variable and then returning the variable, just return that string. And that's going to run just as well. So I'll put that in there and we'll have step three cleaned up more so that's kind of a nice deal where you just return a straight string so that runs it returns this it gets assigned there it gets printed we're going to take that out now because we saw how okay returning a string we're returning the type and here we're returning the type that's the entire type and we proved that, that that's the type right here, right? We're printing out the type of what's returned. So now let's take a look at this code. We'll share that. That's cleaned up. Make sure it's formatted. Share. Copy. Drop this in here. Cleaned up. And we have bar. So here's func bar. It returns a func int. We are returning this func int, right? So this function right here, it's a function that returns an int. So that's a function that returns an int. That's what gets returned. So a function that returns an int, and that, when it runs, is going to return 451. So when we run this bar, it gives us a, this function, and we assign it to x. When we look at the type of that, we see that this is the type, the exact same type that was returned, right? So this is the type of this function. It's a type. Look at the Golang specification. It's a type, just like anything else functions are types and so we can return them just like an int or a string so that's that and then we execute this function so this is what has been assigned to x and when we execute that this function runs and returns 451 which we assign to i and then we print out i and there we go if you wanted to clean this up even further <clears throat> so we've got the 0 www 0 www step 4 cleaned up if we wanted to clean this up even further, we could take, uh, what was I going to do to clean this up even further? We could take this, and instead of signing it to a variable and then printing the variable, we could just run it right there. X, done. Right? Like this used to be I, and what I was equal to is this, so we could just take that and take out that step of assigning it to I. And so sometimes you'll see that, and you're like, what the heck is happening there? Well, the function X, right, ran. And so we could uh, run this, and it gives us 451, so we could share that. And, uh, and then we could clean it up even more. And by clean up, it doesn't mean this is the best way to do it, but this is the way you will see this stuff, and so you should be able to read it and know what's happening. So to clean that up even more, we took bar and assigned it to x and then ran it, but we could also just say that func bar, right, when func bar, what is x equal to? x is equal to this. So let's take that and substitute it for x. Okay? How's that? So that's a little bit interesting, right? So bar runs, and it gives us this function, and that's what gets placed right there, and then we run that function. 451. Now, why on God's green earth would you want to do this? <laughs> or Buddha, or Allah, or uh, I don't know, who are the other gods? <laughs> uh, 
uh, on you know whoever's earth. Why on this green earth would you ever want to do this? I'm I'm agnostic, religious religious agnostic. I believe in all religions, the good that's in them, which is being kind to other people. So if you're a firm believer in one belief system, my intent is not to offend you. <laughs> so why on this green earth would you want to do this? The reason you'd want to do it is uh, is that sometimes you'll you'll return functions. And so in the net HTTP package, uh, you can see here I've searched for funk in my browser, and I just kind of did this thing where you search for a funk right there, right, in my browser. And when I do that, I can look at the index, and I can see all these funk definitions where funk keywords over on the left. But here, this one is taking a funk as a parameter. And when you pass a funk in as an argument, that is a callback. So it's going to call back. But I might want to create a function that then returns a function that then gets put in there so that, depending upon a situation, I have, have that function a certain way. So that might be something that you'd use, uh, a re returning a func. So you could build a func, get it a certain way, and then pass it into something else. That might be a situation where you'd use it. All right, so that's uh, returning a func. And the main thing you just want to take away from this is the stumbling block that most people hit when they first see this stuff. Funk bar, funk int, they're like, what the heck? Remember, function, identifier, parameters, return. This is the return. There's a single one, so we don't need parens around it, right? That's the return. And now we're returning that function, right? And that's the function that gets returned. And so when we call this, that ends up, this ends up here, and then we execute that. So that's returning a function.